Hi, my name is Vishal and I'm a senior trainer in multimedia education. I have a 18 years of industry experience and let's get started with the video. Hello guys, uh, Substance Designer offers a lot of textures which are procedural and it is very important to explore that textures and then and then you will know which texture fits where so that is really important so I am into noises right now and uh, I could see uh, in the last video I have made some uh, textures which is uh, 3D Perlin noise so now we have this textures which are basically um, followed by the 3d Perlin noise so let's explore that I want you to explore all these textures with me and then we uh, together work to build some nice procedural textures uh, in coming videos so uh, I would like to start with uh, something called base material I'll just take that base material here and then uh, I will select that and then just go down and then choose uh, uh, height uh, option on and then we have this uh, anisotropic uh, texture so as I'm selecting this base material here and uh, if you could see there is a true option that uh, let's make it on so you get this uh, input button uh, which is uh, popping up if the uh, if you could see the other options are false and you can possibly change the color and then uh, you should see the result here uh, uh, if not uh, right click and then say view in 3d view then you should able to see the result coming down so I'm just choosing this uh, to 126 I mean I just wanted a mid gray and uh, I don't want it to be a metallic object and then I just wanted it to be slightly rough okay now if you could see we have this anisotropic I'm just dragging this anisotropic here and I'm connecting it to this model and you should able to see that uh, displacement which has been achieved uh, where do we actually use this uh, displacement you know uh, we uh, sorry anisotropic anisotropic is mostly preferably used in uh, brushed metal uh, re uh, results so anisotropic has got uh, x amount and uh, y amount so x is 4 and y is 256 so if i put this values to uh, 256 equally it's a simple noise actually so what it what they have done is they have non-proportionally scaled which gave a stretch of that noise giving you this result so we have y amount by res resolution which means the y amount is now controlled by the resolution of your file so you can switch it off if not required so and um, if you could see uh, we don't have any specific control over this image uh, this noise uh, there is no color attribute given and uh, we have smoothness option which makes it uh, more rough or more uh, soft and uh, the gradation between these two objects is basically called interpolation so you can control the interpolation uh, here you can increase or decrease uh, the blend uh, the way the white and black are blending um, with a gradation of gray uh, and if you want to control the colors uh, of this uh, what is that you need to do is you need to take a gradient map plug that gradient map between and then edit the gradient okay then what you need to do is you need to put uh, almost uh, closer gray values and then you should able to see the amount of um, uh, displacement is controlled I'm just controlling the gray values here okay and uh, I'll just go to this base material 
and then I will uh, increase the metalness and you should able to see that uh, nice uh, um, brushed metal effect and uh, if, if you could go here you can increase this uh, further and uh, you can just play with the values to get your suitable result as uh, the brushed metal okay and uh, if you feel that it's not really working for you with this controls you can always add uh, something like uh, uh, transform 2d and then put it there connect it and then this becomes a node which again gives you a control over uh, the rotation okay and um, you can also control it by scale and all that uh, options generally it's like move rotate and uh, scale okay you can move it you can rotate it you can scale it as you wanted so uh, this uh, two uh, nodes can be added to get extra level of control on what you are looking for uh, coming to the next one which is basically a blue noise so uh, the first one was anisotropic noise so by name you can understand it is anisotropic which gives a stretched brushed metal effect so this noise is pretty grain just nothing uh, about uh, this so if you want to make this one into anisotropic again as i told like you can take a uh, transform 2d effect okay and then width you increase it to uh, thousand percent and then you should able to see that stretch okay and then uh, you should see that nice brushed metal effect with the non-proportional scaling of the noise so keep exploring uh, all that uh, noises now we have black and white uh, noises uh, we have black and white spots one two and three and uh, these are pretty uh, simple noise you can generally <coughs> it looks more organic like a creature skin or algae uh, wet algae formed on rocks uh, I don't know what you want to visualize in this you can generally do that uh, you can also just go and add a gradient map okay uh, not here basically just uh, deselect and then choose gradient map connect it and then connect it to the color of this base material so select that uh, base material and uh, make this uh, base color on and then just connect it there so uh, it also colorizes the texture so in, uh, if you go to the uh, gradient editor and then we have the pick gradient option and then you can click and drag anywhere and then you should able to see that colors coming picking from whatever you are dragging so uh, you could see now this noise is colorized to something else and it can be used to color things and uh, if you feel this part or that part of um, colors you don't like and then you can always go and edit uh, the gradient editor there okay like that and see what you can generally get out of it okay so uh, sky is the limit and uh, you have the scale option as you increase this the texture becomes smaller and it, it, it becomes more dense I can say I could see there and then you have disorder it is like phase of the texture it changes its uh, uh, position so we have roughness and uh, you can ch see the way roughness is affecting the texture there so it add it's adding more high frequency details to the texture uh, that's what I'm telling just see uh, where this uh, can actually work for you let's say you want to create something like lava okay then it's a simple just I select this one uh, gradient editor 
and then I just choose nice yellow okay and then select this one then choose orange now add one more layer which is basically red and then put some black there okay and then delete that colors and then you should be able to see that nice uh, uh, lava effect coming up here now it's all about just playing with uh, so you have the roughness which has got less frequency and then you got high frequency noise okay and uh, how you want it to be it's up to you so the scale value higher gives me more um, uh, I mean the textures become become start becoming smaller so this is uh, black and white spots one what if if I generally pick another uh, black and white spot this is black and white spots two and uh, as I told it is almost uh, very similar but this looks more high frequency more tight and uh, the details are uh, very grainy and disorder basically it's uh, it generally does uh, change the phase of it however you can uh, choose this uh, transform 2d and then start plugging this uh, to scale it okay so uh, the stretch is 100 percent i just wanted it to um, stretch thousand percent and then the texture should become big i should be able to see so if i put this to 500 500 percent and then uh, So this is uh, behaving quite unpredictable because 100% is not restoring the texture. Okay. Uh, it's okay. So the idea is to scale this texture. Okay. So I, I brought back 200%. It's not resetting. Sorry for that. Okay. Let me try uh, have a look uh, on the black and white spot one and do carefully. So if, if you see the black and white spots, it's like white uh, spots here and they're shining, which is the higher value. And here the spots are very much uh, sharp and clear on the gray background. So certain values go inside, certain values pop up. And this one is like um, uh, terrain. And this one is like more pits forming on it. Let's see the black and white spots three. It's more mild compare it uh, in comparison with uh, okay it's very mild i could see that and um, you could generally again explore the sizes so we have this uh, three black and white uh, spots let me try uh, the next one which is the cell category we have three types three or four I guess let me check it so we have cells so let me show you the cells it's it's it looks like all that soft balls or meta balls um, in a uh, soft uh, balls which are in a tub and they are overlapped with each other like soft eggs of some creature and it's it's giving me that nice uh, creature texture okay it's giving that nice creature texture and we have the scale we can generally increase that scale and then you should be able to see that okay uh, let me uh, edit the gradient and uh, it looks like nice dragon uh, which is red hot inside okay so i select this guy and then just give a bright color so that you could able to see it correctly okay so the cells are again just, uh, just control the size and then 
there you go so it, it looks like any uh, uh, organic creature skin or eggs uh, uh, something like that so we have the next one which is the cells 2 double click it it's literally worn eye pattern it it's like uh, cracked glass so you get this okay uh, we have scale again and we have edge width which is something really interesting so we can make that edge look very thin there you know actually you can create all these patterns by yourself this gives me a again um, creature skin or a barren land not uh, fed with water for months together and it get cracked so it is like that so we have uh, cells 3 and this is way soft comparatively you should able to see that it's very thin and soft and it gives very subtle cracks on the result we have scale again it makes the texture big or small and we have hardness okay it's making uh, the lines more strong okay and uh, when i reduce the hardness it becomes very soft mm, it's like contrast okay then we have this uh, cells okay before going into that uh, we have this option called invert which will reverse this texture completely again any random creature or some leaves will have this unique uh, veins uh, on that something like uh, lotus uh, uh, leaf so we have uh, this cells again this is uh, like again same thing but every face is having a different gray value so i'm just connecting it uh, there and you should get this so we have a uh, random pseudo random again called random but not random so pseudo random and then we have image input image input is something really interesting uh, if you take any picture I'm going to take a pattern here and then just take this uh, simple this soft one okay uh, this is like honeycomb pattern but it is soft edged so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that uh, connected to the cells which is fed with now you should be able to see this and that uh, two pictures are like multiplied and the brighter values have the brighter uh, shells and then or scales and then the darker has got the darker scales um, you can increase the tiling and uh, you can increase the scales and see what is going to happen there okay so just explore that and see what um, you get there so this is uh, cells 4 so um, keeping uh, the patterns in mind okay what all patterns substance designer has to offer and then when you understand okay this is the pattern I mean you need to um, explore the textures and keep it in mind whenever you are creating something immediately you know that uh, this is going to be the texture which i'm going to use uh, to achieve the said result so you can generally get it okay that's what uh, it's all about so uh, i'll take another video or more videos to explore more of this kind of textures okay